It's, it's always a pleasure to be here. I want to ask your indulgence. Starting out, I'm coming off a bad cold. So if I lose my voice part of the way through this, my, my daughter back there is going to come up and finish the, finish the lecture for me. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this spring, the Arkansas Historical Association had its annual uh, meeting in Fort Smith, and the topic was borders and, and frontiers. And since I live in Conway now, and since I had been out to Cadron Settlement near Conway, I thought I would do a little research on that. And what I found was, was rather interesting. Uh, well, I guess you'll be the judge of that, but what I found I thought was interesting. Uh, so I've titled this Cadron the Border That Might Have Been the Center. How many of you have been to the Cadron Settlement? Anybody been to the Cadron Settlement? Okay, you know what I'm talking about then. Uh, most people pass over Cadron Creek without knowing if you're going from here to, or from here to, Con to, to Russellville or Fort Smith or Fayetteville. When you cross out of Faulkner County into Conway County, the boundary line is, is Cadron Creek, and you cross this on the I-40 bridge. And also, I wanted to get a good picture of that. <clears throat> this is the creek looking toward the Arkansas River as it flows toward the Arkansas River, taken from the I-40 bridge, uh, which I would not recommend you doing, by the way. <clears throat> uh, I was coming back from Russell one day, and, and, and I was determined to take this picture, so I crossed the bridge, pulled my car over, and sort of half walked and half ran to the middle of the bridge, and, and uh, people honking at you and uh, <laughs> saying, saying things which I'm sure weren't kind on the way. <clears throat> But anyway, I made it to the middle of the bridge and, uh, and took a quick picture and got back to my car to admire uh, the photograph I had taken, and this was it. <laughs> <clears throat> got back out of the car, went back to the middle of the bridge, made sure my fingers were out of the way, and got this picture. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, if you go the old way, if you go the old, what's called the old Marlton Highway from Conway to Marlton, you'll pass this on the outskirts of Conway. Cadron Park Settlement, you go down a little road for about a mile, <clears throat> but most people don't take that road. They just proceed on the old highway. Actually, when we talk about the Ca Cadron Creek, really originates up here uh, northeast of Quitman <clears throat> and flows near Guy and down here. All this is Cadron Creek, and the er this early settlement's pretty much all, way, all the way along this creek. <clears throat> but what we're going to be talking about is the settlement that took place down here where the creek actually flows into the river. The first European to have visited what's now Cadron may, may well have been uh, uh, this guy, uh, Bernard de la Harpe. He's also famous, of course, in Little Rock because he'd come up here looking for the famous jeweled rock out in the, in the, in the river. And, of course, there's a street in, in Little Rock named for him. And he drew a map, which you can't make much out of here. Uh, but you do say, you, you can see here, uh, the Pala Osage and the place of the Osage. The Osages are going to figure in this story that I'm going to tell. So it's not too long after that that the term comes into to, uh, the language. In the French, le cadron, or cadron in English, or as we're going to see in Spanish, el quadrant, or quadrante, uh, meaning the, the, the quadrant, the fourth section probably. And Morris Arnold, who is the, uh, the, the great historian of the colonial period in Arkansas, talks about a commandant at Arkansas Post in 1770, a man named Baldazar de Villiers, who concluded a treaty of peace with the Quapaws and the Osages and promised to provide the Osages with a traitor, and he sent a man named Andres Lopez to Cadron for that purpose. But the lieutenant governor at St. Louis objected and ordered Villiers to prohibit the trade with the Osages, and so raiding between the Osages and the, and the Quapaws resumed. <clears throat> and there were reports that in this vacuum that existed here temporarily, the British may have built a blockhouse here as early as 1770. It may or may not have looked like this one. This is the one that's there today. And the people in the area study this will tell you this. This blockhouse more closely resembles the original blockhouse, which is interesting since we don't have any idea what the original blockhouse looked like. But uh, then the next mention is in 1777, the man on the left, uh, uh, a man named uh, Francois Cruzat, who was a commander at St. Louis, writing to the governor, the Spanish governor of all Louisiana on the right there, Don Bernardo de Galvez, telling of a band of 
the great Osage Indians looking for merchandise that traders had promised to have, quote, at the post which they call El Cadrante on the Arkansas River. Cadre. This painting of an Osage warrior by the famous native, uh, painter of Native Americans, George Catlin, uh, is probably a pretty good likeness. They were a very warlike tribe, uh, and going back to our man Anton Cruzat, reported in 1777 that the Osage tribe was composed of 800 warriors who were of great importance to the St. Louis trade. In that, he wrote, quote, every year this tribe produces 500 to 550 packs of deer skins on their annual trading voyages. <clears throat> and we look at this map of the historic Indian tribes in Arkansas, you'll note that the Osages are up here in really their home areas, in, it's in southwestern Missouri, but all this in northwest Arkansas, whoop, they considered their, their hunting grounds. And they did not take kindly to anyone, be they uh, Native American or European, encroaching into that hunting area. And you can also see that the boundary line, such as it was, between the Quapaws and the, and the Osages was roughly at where Cadron uh, settlement would, would eventually grow up. So it is really a border area. Uh, 1797, despite the Spanish uh, monopoly, or the St. Louis monopoly with the Osage trade, Arkansas traders had, by the promise of cheap goods, enticed a party of Osages to go back to Cadron to trade. But, and this must have been a wild affair, a melee erupted at this trading rendezvous in which a hunter was killed, and the, the new commandant of Arkansas Post, Charles Melchior de Villemont, ordered an end to trading at Cadron with the Osages. Then in 1803, everything changes, of course, not overnight, but gradually, with the, uh, the Louisiana Purchase, which makes all of this now the property of the United States. And it was less than a decade later when the first American settler settled here and he may have built a blockhouse, another blockhouse for protection. A man named William Frazier, writing in the Harrison Times, an article that was reprinted in the Arkansas Gazette in July of 1884, claimed to have arrived at Cadron in 1810 with his parents where they found one John McElmurray already well established with a trading house trading with the Indians, collecting furs and peltries. Uh, McElmurray was an agent for a man named Frederick Nortrieve, who was a very significant figure who lived down near Arkansas Post. And McElmurray was said to have had in his employment not less than 100 hunters, uh, white men and Indians. And as protection against the Osages, he built a blockhouse on his land, which also served as the family dwelling. <clears throat> and then in 1814, <clears throat> this is a marker that's at Cadron today. In 1814 was the famous Rock of Ages Massacre. How many of you are familiar with the Rock of Ages Massacre? Nobody? You're all Arkansas? You, you don't know what the Rock of Ages Massacre was? Well, neither does anybody else <laughs> know what it was. Uh, I have exhausted and talked to people who have studied the settlement here. Nobody, nobody knows what this is a reference to. Uh, whether some Indians killed a couple of people and that came out of the rock, who knows. But there is no historical record that I've been able to find or historian who I've been able to find who knows what the Rock of Ages massacre was. Makes me wonder if the guy that put this plaque there wasn't messing with us. Uh, well, if this will throw them off. Uh, and it's also going to be, it says the last stand of Confederate troops, 1865 and so on. But no clue as to what the Rock of Ages massacre was. Um, we are indebted to this guy, Thomas Nuttall, uh, a British-born naturalist, who in the year 1818 uh, <clears throat> was sponsored by four members of the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia to go on an expedition to explore the Arkansas and the Old Southwest. And in January of 1819, he reached Arkansas Post. In March of 18, 1819, he reached Cadron. And he remarked that the settlement <coughs> contained five or six families. And while we were indebted to this guy, he made a sketch from the river looking back at the settlement, <coughs> which is the, mo the only original <coughs> depiction of it that we have. <coughs> You'll note a couple of dwellings or outbuildings here. It may have been a blockhouse. Oop, 
smart board is smarter than I am. Uh, but I want you to note this, this place right here. Note the style of that roof, which somewhat resembles uh, other French style buildings. This is a, this is a depiction of one at John Law's conception, uh, concession at New Biloxi in 1720. <laughs> and you'll note the type of roof, which sort of resembles that, that uh, building there. <clears throat> this is a type of construction called poto en terre, post in the ground. Uh, and and the, 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 the boards run vertically, not horizontally like we're more accustomed to. <clears throat> then if you ever, anyone ever been to San Genevieve, going to St. Louis, okay, you've been there. <clears throat> this is the famous Beckett Revol House in St. Genevieve, Missouri, near St. Louis, which also a bit resembles this structure right here. So this may have been a, a residence or may have been a barn. But there is some similarity. I mean, that's about all we know. This is all we have to go on. <clears throat> so the record is rather, is rather thin. You'll note also <clears throat> something that, that Nuttall is going to talk about. <clears throat> Nuttall did not think this was going to be a very good place for settlement. He said there's, <clears throat> there's too many <clears throat> ravines and, and, and hills and it's rocky. <clears throat> and <clears throat> if you go out there today, you see it's still that way. Uh, little, little pools of water. He said, I don't see this ever being uh, a place for a settlement. Uh, <clears throat> but he, he did remark on the fact that it was, it, was centrally, it was centrally located along several trade routes. You could go on to the Hot Springs or <clears throat> uh, on, to the, on the Washita or up to St. Louis. He said it's about 150 miles by land from Arkansas Post to here. 150 miles by land, which would have been about 300 miles by water. That was a standard multiplier. Morris Arnold tells me that if it was 150 miles by land, you just doubled it. It can't account for all the, the oxbows. So a pretty good hop upriver. Uh, he commented on the fact that town lot speculation had been tried here, but it hadn't really caught on. <clears throat> but his main concern was what they really needed was a good tavern. <clears throat> he said, we need a house of they need a house of public entertainment. Has long been wanted, as Cadron lies in another of the leading routes to this territory. Well, he left uh, Cadron and proceeded on up the Arkansas, going as far as about present-day Guthrie, Oklahoma. <clears throat> and eventually, this is the first advertisement that we've been able to find, I've been able to find, Ad, an advertisement for sale of town lots at Cadron. This appears in the Missouri Gazette, February 1819. And you see John McElmurray's name is one of the proprietors there. Well, uh, Nuthall, on his return trip, arrives back at Cadron in December of, 18, of, uh, uh, of that same year, 1818. And he noted now that there are four families residing here and noted it was considerable that there are a lot of people passing through <clears throat> and, and the settlement now had a tavern, just not one that he liked. <clears throat> he said this, quote, the only tavern is very ill provided, was consequently crowded with all sorts of company. It contained two tenantable rooms built of logs with hundreds of crevices that still open, <clears throat> notwithstanding the severity of the season. <clears throat> Every reasonable and rational amusement appeared here to be swallowed up in dram drinking jockeying, and gambling. <clears throat> I don't know what he expected the tavern to be, but, uh, <clears throat> and it really perturbed him. He said, even our landlord, in defiance of the law, was often the ringleader of what it was his duty to suppress. <clears throat> and although I have been through life perfectly steeled against games of hazard, he didn't gamble, <clears throat> neither wishing to rob or be robbed, I felt somewhat mortified to be thus left alone because of my unconquerable aversion to this sort of Vortex, <coughs> that may have been what the tavern looked like, or it may not. <coughs> Vortex of swindling and idleness. <coughs> and I was able, in doing research, I was able to find a, 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 what's really a rare <coughs> photograph of the inside of one of these taverns. And you can see it is a pretty disreputable bunch of people here <laughs> at, uh, at Cadron. <coughs> Drinking and smoking and Gambling is just not the kind of place. They've gone to the dogs. Uh, <clears throat> well, he left on January the 4th, never to return. 
But in 1819, Arkansas becomes a separate territory. <coughs> and of course, as, as you know, it, Arkansas territory at one time includes all, almost all of present-day Oklahoma. <coughs> but the years 1819, 1820, 1821 are going to be very pivotal years for, for Cadron. <coughs> uh, this is another marker there. <coughs> Side of Cadron Courthouse and Post Office. Now, I, when I hear that, I think of a courthouse building and a post office building, and I don't think that's what was here at all. <coughs> there was a, probably a, a home where they conducted county business. That was the courthouse. <coughs> and there was probably a tavern or store where they distributed the mail. That was the post office, not a, po not a separate building. <coughs> and apparently also the home of fiery Judge James McHenry. <coughs> The only record I found of McHenry was he lived down at White Bayou, which is between here and, and Cadron. <clears throat> but I don't know if you'd really want your case to be tried by someone named Fiery Judge James McHenry. <clears throat> but you see Pulaski County stretches all the way to the western border, today's western border. <clears throat> and Cadron quickly emerges. You can see Cadron Here's Cadron and the Maumelle River and Arcopolis, which that's, that's going to become Little Rock. Stay five stay five <laughs> I got to stay five inches away? Okay. There you go. Arcopolis, there you go. Little Rock. <laughs> um, and in 1820, the Territorial Legislature passed a bill to make Cadron the county seat of Pulaski County. So that was in James, Governor James Miller signed it in late June. <clears throat> Three days later, a bill was passed by the House to make Cadron the capital of Arkansas Territory. And the Territorial House had about nine people in it. <clears throat> uh, and the Territorial Council, which was the upper body, had about five. So we're not talking about large numbers of people here. The House passed a bill to make Cadron <coughs> the new territorial capital, but the Council <coughs> informed the House that while it concurred with their, uh, uh, their motion, they wanted a couple of amendments, one of which was to change the name of Cadron to Little Rock and make Little Rock <coughs> the, the, the capital. But the House refused to budge, <coughs> and so the matter is postponed. And that postponement is a bad sign for Cadron <clears throat> because a number of people, <clears throat> including this guy, soon to make a name for himself in Texas, <clears throat> there were two groups of people that had claims at what's now Little Rock. <clears throat> there were people that had what were called New Madrid claims, claims they had gotten from the federal government after the New Madrid earthquake <clears throat> had devastated that area. There are others who had what are called preemption claims. An early sailor had, had, had squatted here made some improvements and then claimed that land for himself and then he passed the title supposedly onto someone else. So you've got two, two groups fighting to make Little Rock capital and they agree on one thing. They may not agree on whose claim is valid but they agree that the capital needs to be here. And some of the big names in early Arkansas history, Chester Ashley, <clears throat> famous of course because he has, he's the only person to have two streets named after him in Little Rock, Chester and Ashley. <clears throat> and Territorial Governor James Miller. Both had claims here, <coughs> as did Henry Conway <coughs> and uh, the Territorial Secretary Robert Crittenden. If you know your Arkansas history, you'll know that it will not be too long until these two men would fight a duel in which uh, Robert Crittenden would kill uh, Henry Conway. <coughs> so the delay is not good because some powerful people have interest here, not up there. <coughs> By 1836, <coughs> Well, by this time, Cadron has lost out to Little Rock, and of course, lose, if you lose the territorial capital, it, it followed that you're not going to be the county seat of Pulaski County very long either. And sure enough, in 1824, that was moved down here as well. But all was not lost. <coughs> if it could not be the uh, capital uh, of the territory or the ca uh, county seat of Pulaski County, it could hope to be <coughs> the county seat of Conway County, newly formed Conway County, <coughs> which in fact it was for a very, very brief period. <clears throat> it was understood from the very beginning uh, that this would only be a temporary place. <clears throat> and of course, it was temporary, and by the, the county seat of Conway County was eventually moved. Of course, Cadron Settlement is not even in Conway County today, it's in Faulkner County. 
Uh, but uh, by 1831, Encadron is almost completely deserted. But it's not in this historical record. There's Conway County today, and of course you won't find Cadron on it because it would be right down here in Faulkner County. <clears throat> Does not disappear from the historical record, but rather it reappears uh, in 1834 <clears throat> as a part of the Trail of Tears route. And we're particularly interested in this blue route here. It starts up there about Ross's Landing and comes uh, up to Tennessee and on the Ohio briefly down to Mississippi and up to Arkansas and through what's now Cadron. <coughs> uh, <coughs> this party, <coughs> uh, this removal party was led by a man named Joseph Harris, <coughs> uh, New Hampshire born man, West Point graduate, class of 1825, <coughs> and he ends up transporting <coughs> eventually about 500 Cherokees on this route and eventually up the Arkansas River uh, on a steamboat pulling, at one time anyway, probably three barges. This is a painting by a Cherokee artist named Sam Watts Kidd. And there's another image similar to it. And you can see this one in some of the signs. This is a historic sign at uh, in several places along the, the Arkansas River. Uh, the plan is to go all the way by water into the Indian Territory, presently Oklahoma. But when Harris, he'd already been plagued by some health problems, and he was, he was pestered everywhere we stopped. There were whiskey dealers trying to sell the, the Indians whiskey. Uh, they had an outbreak of measles, which caused them to stop every so often and bury someone. <clears throat> and he gets just above Cadron, and he finds out that the, the, the Arkansas River is too shallow for the boat to go any farther. And so eventually he disembarks the entire group at Cadron. And, and here at Cadron, <coughs> uh, here at Cadron, the tribe is struck by an outbreak of cholera, which spreads very quickly. <coughs> and Harris, to his credit, did all he could. He tried to, he's trying to get resources now to, to carry them the rest of the way by land teams and wagons and supplies. That's going to take time. <clears throat> and he enlists a doctor, a local doctor, to come out and treat uh, the, the Indians who are, have been struck by cholera. And before long, the doc, doctor himself contracts cholera and dies. <clears throat> so this is another marker at, at Cadron, the Cherokee Memorial. This is what it says. <clears throat> a partial list of the persons who died and were buried at Cadron. <clears throat> Perished from cholera while being relocated by the army in 1834. Graves are marked with native stone, no inscription. And it says that some of the Indians had adopted Christianity <clears throat> and the customs of white. Some had assumed Anglo Saxon names. This last sentence is interesting. <clears throat> Before 1850, it was common for Cherokee children to be unnamed until after their seventh birthday. Anybody know that? Neither did the Cherokee Cultural Center in, in, in Tahlequah. <clears throat> and I called him, I said, I've never heard of that. And they said, We've never heard of that either. <clears throat> But you'll note that many of them don't have first names. They're somebody's child. And a lot of these people that contracted disease, well, it was the old and the young, the very old and the very young, were the most susceptible. <clears throat> but when you look at these names, it is really a, yeah, it's really a sobering thing to look at. Eventually, about 80 people died here, and, and Harris would later estimate <clears throat> that before the trip was over, about half the party would perish through disease. Well, the Trail of Tears was, a, and he, he commented upon the fact that there's nothing here but ruins. <clears throat> the Trail of Tears passed on, and then later, Cadron enjoys a brief revival as a spot along the Butterfield Stage Road. <clears throat> and I'm still amazed that the people got on a stagecoach and rode all the way to California through some of this rugged territory. <clears throat> there's a couple of routes. Here's the one we're interested in, coming out of Memphis and <clears throat> going up the river. Any of you, eh, that may, may or may not look like what the stagecoach looked like in those days. But you do go out there today, you can still see the old stage road. Uh, and you know it's the old stage road because there's a very faded sign that says old stage road right there. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, well, again, that's, a temp that's a not a very long-lived thing either. And finally, the last real uh, appearance of Cadron in historical records is... Uh, it was coveted by both sides in the Civil War. There were sawmills near there, gristmills near there, 
Confederate troops occupied it uh, early in the war, and then when, when Little Rock Falls, the Union troops, uh, Union troops uh, occupied, and, and uh, a lot of Confederates surrendered, hundreds of Confederate troops surrendered. This is one of the <coughs> sesquicentennial markers that my friend Mark Crest helped put in, one of the, at least one in every county in the state. <coughs> this one was stolen soon after it was put up. <coughs> and I, I know that because uh, my wife and I and my daughter stole it. Uh, <coughs> and here, here's, this, here's the back story. <coughs> we went out there because I'd heard this, the mark was going to be put up. <coughs> and uh, so it, it was, but it was crooked. <coughs> and I said, I asked my I said, see if you can straighten that up. Well, it was, it was very loose on the stand. It could be lifted right off the stand. And Cadron's out there in the middle of nowhere. That thing's not going to last very long. So I called Mark Chris, who was on vacation down on the Gulf Coast, and said, Mark, <clears throat> I hate to tell you this, but this sign is not attached. He, he said, just take the darn thing off and take it back until you can get it secured. <clears throat> so hopefully not many people saw us carrying this marker, <laughs> put it into the back seat of my car, and driving off with it. <clears throat> but it is back. It's there if you want to go see it. <clears throat> uh... First Cadre Reconstruction, 1976, here's a ceremony they had uh, dedicating it, photographed courtesy of the Faulkner County Historical Society. Uh, <coughs> and that was the first reconstructed blockhouse. <coughs> it was burned by, by some uh, young people, burned to the ground later. And a second <coughs> reconstruction is the one that's there now. And occasionally they still have programs out here. Well, what happens? How, how did that situ decision in 18, 20, 21 impact? Well, Little Rock grows and prospers and becomes the state capital. <clears throat> and Cadron fades into insignificance. But <clears throat> for all that, it's, still a, it's really a beautiful place to go look at the river. <clears throat> And you can get a sense of history by just walking around here, you know, a sense of the native beauty of the place. And, uh, my daughter says I'm supposed to give her credit for some of these photographs, so I'll do that. <coughs> this is looking upriver from Cadron. Even a place for a beautiful young woman to go and contemplate life <laughs> uh, <coughs> sometime. So despite of all that, uh, I still, if you're ever in this part, it'll take a few minutes, drive down there and see this place called Cadron, the border that might have been the center. Thank you. <laughs> That's just about all I know about Cadron, but if you have a question, I'll try to, no, I'm afraid of that. Okay. <laughs> I told you I knew it. I told you about all. Uh, the city of the Faulkner County Historical Society. I, I think the city of Conway may own it, but that could already, maybe Faulkner County that owns it. I'm not sure. Who, and, and, it is the city of Conway. I think the Corps of Engineers That's right. The Corps of Engineers did. Marshall Arnold says they felt guilty about constructing the dams that washed away part of the original settlement, so they gave the rest to <laughs> the, 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 city, the city of Conway. I believe that's correct. Maybe I think you may be right about that. But there's really not much here other than the blockhouse or the boat ramp there now. <clears throat> and unfortunately, right to the, if you're facing the blockhouse, right behind you is a sand and gravel operation. <clears throat> so that sort of takes away some of the rustic, uh, rustic scenery. But uh, it's, still a, it's still a pretty place. You, know, you do get a sense of history when you're out there. Yes, sir. Uh, no, but I can find out. The, now, the lady I work with, uh, Alita Langley Watts at the historic Faulkner County Historical Society, probably knows the answer to that. Well, but she's talked to people who, <clears throat> no one seems to, I think she told me the person that was responsible for that is dead. So I put on the list history, history, Arkansas History List, sir, which some of you may be on. Anybody know anything about this? <clears throat> and they don't know anything at the Faulkner County Museum. Uh, nobody I talked to knows anything. <laughs> I talked to Guy's son. Uh, this is Guy Jr. This Mike Mike Murphy. 
There's a Mike Murphy whose father was involved in the Cadron settlement too, but he didn't know anything about it either. Okay. And so even the people at the museum don't know. Oh, really? Maybe you could find out and let me know. You think you could, maybe you could find out and let me know. I'd, I'd be interested in that because I've not been able to find any record of it anywhere. I did find a book one time. It had looked in the index at Rock of Ages Massacre. I bought the book. Nothing in the book about Rock of Ages Massacre. <laughs> Anything else? Thanks for being very attentive. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.